Great to meet you guys. Great to meet you as well. Great to meet you, man. Loving the stuff. Yeah, just love the music. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, awesome yeah. to hear that. Yeah, yeah, I just listened to them all again, too, on the, the road. I was just uh, going down to a convention, uh, MAGFest. I don't know if you heard that one. Uh, I haven't. A, it doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, Wait. it's in the D.C. area. It's a big music and gaming festival. Okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. yeah, and I introduced you to a lot of the guys there, too. I'm like, oh, you got to hear Beast in Black. It's awesome. Cool. Thanks very much. Hey, where are you? Are you at home or where? Your place looks much more like rock and metal than our place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh it's just a spot where I record stuff uh, and usually do Zoom calls and everything. So right. I've kind of made it my all-purpose room where I just do all my stuff when I'm at the computer. All right. Cool. So yeah. you're a musician as well, like because I, I I think I know you the least in a way from from the guys, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. So, uh yeah i mean i guess aspiring musician i i play music only to really uh get closer to the music and mm -hmm. uh, get a closer understanding of it um it gives me more appreciation to everything i listen to um i'm working on recording a cover album which is uh covers and medleys of old uh video game tunes and like a lot of movie themes from the 80s and 90s right. usually like training montage scenes and stuff like that so it has a very uh training montage uh, theme to it to yeah. make you feel good make you you know yeah. uh -huh. really uplifting stuff you mean like yeah but yeah. you're doing it with uh with the direct swiper thing yeah that's right yeah okay. so we're working on a first album uh this yeah because year. i saw those bunch of videos that you recorded like earlier so oh cool nice yeah and we're re-recording those songs too with um like more proper uh equipment this time Oh, okay. Yeah, this is my first album ever. So I've never done this before. So I'm really uh just just diving okay. in and enjoying it. Well, yeah. there's a first time for everything. Yeah, good luck yeah. with it. Yeah, Hope absolutely. it turns out the way you want. Yeah. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, and I love yeah. the, the video game too that you guys did. That's really cool. It's uh <laughs> such a good yeah. idea. Yeah, it was kind of fit into the theme of cyberpunk that the album is like let's make kind of eighties, nineties type of a uh, beat em up game and mm -hmm. you know i like that kind of stuff and he also like me and Kape, i think we are the biggest nerds of the band <laughs> <laughs> oh most probably yeah yeah, yeah but, but 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 only the old school games yeah I, exactly. I don't i don't really know anything about that yeah you know, more modern stuff so yeah, yeah you yeah. know eight, eight and 16 bit stuff is you know the, the best stuff for me at least yeah i'm pretty limited when it comes to newer stuff but uh yeah the old stuff uh yeah yeah love it yeah how, how old are you are you like uh 42 42 okay so born yeah. in 1980. uh yeah 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 that's a good year yeah that's right, right on 1980. <laughs> how about you guys I i'm 42 as well okay yeah, yeah i'm 35 i think okay <laughs> you think, <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah, i'm born in 87 so i think i Turned 35 the last time. I, I'm so yeah. <laughs> bad with numbers. I'm bad with my memory. Yeah. I'm supposed to be 30 still. So yeah. it, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's see. This year I'll turn 43. And I always uh compare my age to actors or actors who have played older characters through the use of like old makeup. And the one that's really crazy this year, so 43, and I think uh, you too, maybe. Uh, will be as old as uh, Father Marin in The Exorcist. Uh, when Ma Max von Sydow filmed it, he was uh, 43. Uh, I think he was 44 by the time it came out, but that's just crazy to think. Um, <laughs> the priest in The Exorcist will yeah. be that old. Right, right. Well, not as old as the character, don't worry. Just as yeah. old as the, the actor. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny thing because I also think about, I'm a huge like movie fan, like movie geek, and always like check all the interviews and making of of especially James Cameron my favorite director I'm like I thinking okay when did he make Terminator how old was he how old am I like oh my god I'm a failure oh. <laughs> but, but I haven't <laughs> achieved I anything compared to that like at the, the, at the, the same, same age. age yeah yeah, oh, yeah. I just thought of Steven Spielberg with Jaws he was like 23 or something like that or Man. I don't know yeah, I forget just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry finish your Oh no, that's it. But that that's the but that's extraordinary for to put out something like Jaws at such a young age. That's 
that's not normal usually. So you don't. Yeah, no, I'm actually just about to finish the George Lucas uh, uh, book called Life. It was written by damn, I forgot the author, but you know his like biography. Oh, okay, and, cool. And they tell about the Jaws and like the beginning of George and Stephen and uh, Francis Ford Coppola and those guys, and it's interesting to like. Oh yeah. Like all the pioneers of the the seventies. Exactly. Like I'm so curious about that stuff, how it started, and mm -hmm. and with the vivid imagination that I have, I kind of imagine myself there. I paint the pictures in my head, and I'm there. How it's happening? I'm so excited, just like wow, like to kind of live their dreams uh, through my own mind, like and mm -hmm. a huge respect for those guys. You know. Oh yeah. But unfortunately, like they still uh, fucked up ET game. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> no matter how big Steven Spielberg is, no, they still can screw you up <laughs> in some way. Yeah, it's every a different time with uh, uh, movie adaptations and games. Mm. Just uh, yeah, very different. Um, yeah, again, very pioneering that time. It, it was one of the first games I know where you could actually beat it. There's actually a way to to finish the game instead of just getting a high score and it goes on and on and on. Right. Uh, but yeah, that sometimes it didn't work out <laughs> as good. With the, the, you had experiment, I guess, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But you also do this pioneer work because, you know, in 2006 when you started, like, I think you were the first who did it, like, well, the way that you do it and everyone else copied you after that. Um, cool, I want to say in this point, at this point, I want to say greetings from my uh, one of my best friends uh, who is a leader of a band called Night Stop. He told me, wow, you're having an interview with AVGN. Tell him greetings from me. I'm his biggest fan in Finland. Like, I've been following him since 2006. So greetings from Ere Ek, a guy from Night Stop. He oh, plays awesome. Retro wave synth music. So, Oh, great. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, no. Held, kept my promise to him now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, usually, when people give me those kind of greetings, I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> <wants to." laughs> so you're really honorable in this sense. Yeah. Well uh, done. Oh, I, cool. I think I, I, I possibly have listened to you guys before. I know Anton. I think you were. Uh, I've listened to Battle Beast a long time ago because I, right. from what I understand, you were uh, early on. So uh, I've heard all that, all that stuff too. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So now I'm wondering, I might not be even aware of like other bands you guys have been in that I've heard already. So, yeah, but Copa uh, has been like in, you've played in UDO, Udo yeah. Dirk Schneider. Yeah, Udo Dirk Schneider. Yeah. I played with him for four years. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Oh, cool. So that That's pretty cool because, you know, I was just always listening to that stuff like when I was a teenager, like Accept and UDO and finally get to actually play in the same band with the guy so it's you know not bad at all that yeah that's some royalty there that's awesome yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely and you know the guy is a total legend so yeah you know, yeah so it was a nice job for four years and after that we just started doing this beast in black thing and you know everything seems to be going pretty well now so let's just see what the future holds oh cool awesome yeah. yeah i see that you have a bunch of guitars there in the back what do you have uh, let's see. Two of them are just Gibson SGs, and then uh, one of them not, not too exciting, just a Fender Strat, and then there's a. Yeah, big well, there. yeah. <laughs> but they're actually Gibson SGs, not Epiphone. Oh yeah, actually, well, this one here, um, my friend Mark gave me as like a gift. This one's an eight string. Oh wow, <laughs> that's that's two strings too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which I, I don't do a lot of, but I love just playing around and experimenting with stuff, and you know, yeah, of how it's done because I yeah. listen so much of that stuff and i'm like you know i'm really really curious like how do you do that you know right so how long have you played i would say um 20 years i've played drums i've played guitar like I, i've i've kind of just dabbled in a little of this a little of that but i only really focused on guitar like the past like few years right that's the only time when i started really starting to learn some of the theory behind it and just uh even recording stuff because I never would re really record in anything. Um, I mean, I played with some bands before, but we were just 
we were messing around. It was just, we we're just having fun, not really thinking about what it is we're doing. Um, but uh, in the past few years, it's been, you know, a lot of, a uh, lot of progress. Right. Yeah. And the best way is like what you're doing, you're making an album. That's the best way to actually learn the instrument. You apply the skills into creating music, how to produce, how to record and mix and like uh, arrange things. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's the best school instead of just going to guitar lessons and never making an album or a song. So mm -hmm. that's the best way. Oh, yeah. Trial so. by fire. Just go for it. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. learning by doing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've mixed albums, I've produced albums, and I, I'm not a producer or mixing guy by, like, I didn't graduate as one, you know, I've just started doing it, not knowing what the hell am I supposed to do, and just have a sound in my head, and then tweaking all the sounds and turning knobs, and okay, now it sounds like shit, then I turn more, sounds even shittier, what the fuck am I doing wrong? <laughs> Then I finally find a solution. Ah, there was this button. I didn't realize what that's, that does. And now I know. And like all kinds of things you learn along the way when you force yourself in that kind of a situation that you must like what you started, you have to finish it no matter what. And yeah. that's exactly trial by fire and just don't give up on the way. And that's the mentality. Anyone who makes like a any kind of work of art, a video, a song or painting or write a book or whatever just finish what you started no matter if it's imperfect or bad like you will never get better unless you finish it you know you have to finish finish things mm -hmm. to start on. yeah and then look back at it and be like well i could have done this a little different so yeah exactly next time, yeah. yeah but it's not yeah. like okay all these things i've done so far i have to remake all of them to be perfect it's not not like that either but some old bands i've seen they have been doing a lot of this re-recording, remixing their old albums. Like Manowar is the best example. Of. One of my favorite bands is like Manowar, but <laughs> they've remixed yeah. like two or three of their albums and re-recorded two or three of their old albums. Like, but when oh, okay. did the last? When did the last full album came out? Came out like uh, I don't know. It's like ten years or something. So mm -hmm. just invest the time to make something new rather than poking the old stuff all the time and okay perfect so yeah yeah but who am i to judge everyone like like does their own decisions especially in like art artistic field you can fuck around with your own, own things as much as you like but you know then be ready for the consequences if fans get bored of that and of mm -hmm. not getting anything new then well you can look into mirror then and like that's it so yeah, I guess the moral is just keep going forward, not backward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because if you wanted to perfect something like that, it, it could literally take you for a lifetime because every other year or whatever, you know, time uh, separation you want to put there, like you have a different skill set and a different mind frame. There is no way that you can, you know, I could record something today for my vocals. And then if I revisited it a year later, I would have a totally different approach. So it would sound like almost two different people. There is no way that I would make the perfect recording in no matter what time frame you would give me. So it's kind of pointless. Like when you realize that and you're like, yeah, I cannot make an album for seven years. It's just, you know, it's bonkers. It's stupid. So just do what you can at the time deadline that you're given or whatever time frame that you've put yourself to do it. And just move on like whatever you wanted to do better in that just do it in the next work and and that's it for me there's never been another way yeah like your episodes you know the first seasons of avgn like they are great you know you don't have to redo it redo those mm -hmm. um, like they're all classics you know oh, cool. technology wasn't the same there but you know the off thin authenticity 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 yeah exactly thanks <laughs> so like you can feel it and you cannot retake those takes mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah unless you're doing it for comedy like sometimes i'll time travel back into an episode or something like that so, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly <clears throat> oh, oh maybe a funny question but uh who plays the keyboards uh mr computer uh well on this latest album there's this mysterious lady cynthia she is mentioned in the booklet oh, okay she is physically not uh, 
on stage with us yet. Okay. But one day she will be. <laughs> oh, There's, okay, cool. Uh, we kind of already started the process of slowly introducing the, this mysterious Cynthia. I mean, mm. I've been getting this question mm. since 2017. It's like, your gigs are awesome, but you should have a keyboard player. The last time like was on this previous tour. It happens it, all the time. In December. Yeah, all the in, time. Yeah, yeah in, on this Nightwish support mm. run. Yeah. Some fan in the merch uh, stand came to me and said, hey, like you need a keyboard player and like he was a keyboard player himself that time yeah. he kind ah. of wanted <laughs> ah he, he wanted a way in yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that has happened well, a couple yeah, times because yeah because he said you really need a keyboard player it would mm. look better but i'm always thinking what the hell like a band from germany power wolf they don't even have a bass player and there's <laughs> zero bitching about that from the fans yeah nobody bats an eye you know? i it's can't just... take it like and we always get it why don't you have a keyboard player sabaton doesn't have a keyboard player well at least they didn't have for many years back in tracks and all zero comments about no you should they should player. have a choir because like you know sabaton have all these huge choirs yeah. you know there's like 1000 vocals and even if you see five people on stage singing it's like ah i'm convinced there's a hundred voices like no come yeah, on yeah so you know. and that's why i kind of thought okay for the fans you'll get a keyboard player we'll, um, we're just gonna double down yeah. that's all yeah, the thing is kind of first i was thinking should it be a hologram or a robot oh. <laughs> well, that takes a lot of time and money and like resources to make it happen oh, yeah. We'll come up with something how to present her Cynthia on stage with us someday. So it's not that big of a secret. Hologram. Yeah, hologram. Yeah. Because <laughs> the answer is in the booklet, but nowadays people mostly uh, download the music from online. So few people have actually read the booklet where it says keyboards by Cynthia. Oh, okay. <laughs> but if I'm really serious, of course, in the studio, I help her program the keyboards <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. exactly. well yeah reason i ask because it sounds great it's like such a big part on the uh on the recordings it sounds awesome like it it makes the song sound so big um yeah, I, guess. I was just curious as to how you went about uh putting the keyboards in because I, I realized you didn't have a keyboard player on stage so i was just curious how that worked yeah well i think i went nuts already on the first album the keyboards because I have to mention a little bit the background uh, when I was in Battle Beast in the first three albums, like I always had to think, OK, what can the player play and what should should come from the backing tracks? And it was such a pain in the ass always. To, I felt like holding back as a songwriter what I should or shouldn't write. But with the Beast, like I thought, OK, it's a clean new start and whatever I want to hear. I'm going to write it there. I'm going to put it there. It's going to come from backing tracks if we cannot perform it ourselves with our instruments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then the other thing is that since a uh, small kid, I've been a huge fan of like Eurobeat, Eurodance, Italo Disco, 80s synth pop, all that stuff. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to blend in those elements from that kind of genre, not just like metal stuff, because my favorite band is Judas Priest, then Manowar, as I said, Wasp, uh, Accept, uh, Black Sabbath, Tony Martin era, Black Sabbath. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I thought, okay. I think just, we all agree on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I think, yeah, we all just always have to mention a Tony Martin era. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's Tony so under, underappreciated. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's kind of like when they really had the band, like, really figured out by then. Yeah, and they had Cozy Powell on drums, so. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I guess with, when, um yeah, Cross Purposes is probably. But actually, there's anyway. probably Ron Nelly on that album. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. They yeah. did change it up. The lineup did change, but. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think at, around that time, I think um, there were so many different music genres going on. Um, yeah, it, you know, traditional heavy metal wasn't really the, the most popular genre that you could imagine. Because yeah. of all the grunge and alternative and whatnot, yeah. it was yeah. a dreadful time. And uh, that, <laughs> yeah, that that when I was just, just starting to get into music, and I was just like listening to it, you know, old school hard rock and heavy metal, and you know, grunge was like the big thing. And I was like, why are people listening to this? You know, <laughs> why? I just couldn't understand it. Yeah. But, it of took course. me a while, but I went I went back and got in a lot of that. But I remember at the time, yeah, I felt the same way. I was like, it, music got so exciting, and I guess it just got 
too exciting and it was like okay we need to bring it down we need to start over again you know yeah i guess i don't know but yeah. you know after the uh 80s kind of thing you know when everything was totally over the top you know mm -hmm. everything just wanted to have something different something like mm -hmm. the polar opposite that was stripped down and dirty and gritty and mm -hmm. ugly and whatever and i guess that they did a good job with that but it wasn't mm -hmm. anything for me mm -hmm. but lucky for me there was eurobeat and euro dancing the yeah well of course <laughs> but that was only in europe yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like it. I can't believe the Backstreet Boys were in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, crazy. That's, <laughs> that's like 20 plus years ago. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. And what do yeah. I have a question? Uh, sorry, if you oh, have. Oh, sorry. Something. Oh no, go for yeah, it. Like, uh, since I guess you've played the game, the Beast in Black One Night in Tokyo game. Mm -hmm. What's your feedback on that? Because you know, uh, I just talked uh, to Yanis and Gasperi before this interview. Okay, I have to play this game. I myself haven't even properly tried the last version of the game before this interview, like quickly play. Okay, if you ask something about the game, I have to know what to say or what to answer, you know. Oh, I'm, okay. So now, oh. I, now I'm sure about things. To <laughs> I would improve there, but I want to hear your opinion about it. Yeah, yeah. Good or bad things. Yeah, and look oh, at okay. it as a developer question. Like, we do actually, you know, want the real oh, thing. Oh, okay. Like, you're still working on things in it, or is it... Um, yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Okay. Next level um, is coming and all stuff like that. So. Oh, yeah. Well, it, well, it's very authentic. It looks just like an, an old school beat em up, but playing the arcades. Like the graphics looks exactly like I would think. Um, and it's it's hilarious. I love it. You go into the club and then the band is in there playing. And then you For get 17. outside and then Mecha Godzilla is coming out and stuff. So I like that. It's like really, you know, over the top. Um, I think the only thing that would make it a little more authentic would be the sound, I guess, because like the, the sound is like the full, you know, One Night in Tokyo song. Um, but, oh, you have an idea there? I think he did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, okay. just told, I just told the guys also before the interview, the next step when we develop the second level, we're going to have this kind of a more authentic soundtrack. We're going to remove the album version of the songs. So there's oh, okay. some actual vocals. I'm going to remake the songs, like minimize them to sound more like the original game soundtracks kind of like eight bits, kind though. of like eight bits or, or 16 bits or 16 yeah. bits yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah that, perfect yeah that's what we also like agreed and thought that oh, it's cool. nice to hear yeah. that you also think the same so yeah so we're on right tracks then oh nice yeah that that'll change yeah. it for sure like that that'll make it look very very authentic mm -hmm. uh look and sound authentic uh what else what else is there anything um Oh, well, I mean, I'm not used to playing uh, games on the computer. I'm, I'm usually used to playing on the console, so I'm not uh, the best to judge, I guess. But I I imagine there's got to be a way to plug in a controller. Uh, yeah. Not a yeah. problem, though. Definitely not a problem. But, um, you know, if playing on a controller would make it even more... Uh, to add some kind of Bluetooth, like, into the controller. No, that but there, be, that some, also something. sparks a very good idea. Like, you have those USB game sticks, basically, you, gamepad, whatever you name them. And then, basically, you can just have, like, that settings gear on the window. And then you can assign the buttons to the gamepad. Like, mm. it's just a USB mm. uh, pad. Okay, yeah. So, you can, get, you can just connect it to the computer tower. Yeah. So, it's... Yes! <laughs> so, you yeah, like, you can make yeah. sure that you can assign the buttons yeah, to yeah. the... Okay, yeah, so and then the player can it, play yeah. like what with whatever yeah. you know, settings they want on the yeah on the yeah, yeah, game. Yeah, definitely good. Idea. Yeah, I, th I think you guys got it. Yeah, I think you, you guys know what to do. So. Okay. <laughs> two out oh, of two. Uh, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Iron Maiden had games, and you guys got a game. Like, I think it's it's such a great idea. Like, it it goes with the whole uh, you know retro concept. Um, it's like, of course, they have a game. It's like, of, of course, it just has to. It's the eighties. It's <laughs> yeah and I, I guess the most important thing in it is to have fun to have a game that's actually fun to play and like the controls are fluent and oh yeah like even on the like, keyboard it felt very fluent like it you know yeah. wasn't a problem at all especially yeah. like with the beat em up game it's you know pretty but, much you could yeah show anybody a game like that and be like oh okay yeah they'd understand right away like how yeah, yeah. you know how to play it yeah. one thing i just thought that maybe we should have this kind of a control uh, of motion in midair you know when you jump 
and you press an arrow to a different direction when you ran in the air and the character would go then to that direction like in super mario or turtles in time mm -hmm. now when you walk certain way jump and then you want to change the direction in the air it doesn't change so yeah. that would be a nice addition to have that oh okay yeah nice the mid jump uh steering or yeah yeah exactly that's yeah thing. to make it even more like to make you feel that you're in control and i don't know if it's even possible but it could be like both like when it goes up or down not just left or right you know so when you jump you should uh, still be able to uh, change that dimension and not just the left and right dimension, you mean how you, know? how you jump no, 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 but when you're jumping and then like you're mm. walking towards the whole mm -hmm. area, you know, oh, this yeah, yeah. way. You mean depth yeah. wise? Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. Good point, good point. Exactly. Yeah. So it, could, it wouldn't be just a... left and right, but yeah. 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 So like yeah. to the player or further further from yes, the player. Yes, exactly. You're right. I didn't think of that. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Brainstorming. Yeah. That's Brainstorming. How it goes. <laughs> <laughs> little, little help from everyone. So yeah. Yeah. Now, now I'm wondering if uh, I have to play some more beat em ups again, like and just see like how many of them allowed you to do that. Um. So that, that's a, that. Yeah, that'd be a great, great feature. Yeah. Yeah. To make it smaller. Also, oh, the free meeting will end in ten minutes. Free meeting. Let's see. 10 minutes the meeting the host needs to upgrade your paint but i have a paid account hmm interesting well, let's see well let's just see what happens in 10 minutes <laughs> yeah yeah we also have this timer here it says like time left 9 40 something seconds nine minutes 40 seconds 39. Oh, okay but Ooh, I, yeah. I wonder, like uh we're coming to definitely to us like soon again oh we're great so like if we are near your town, just like uh, come check out the show, or have you already seen us live? Uh no, not yet. But if you come around, I definitely will. Uh, mm. I checked your tour dates right before this. It seems you're coming to Atlanta um, in like uh, I forget when, but sometime uh, this September. year. September should be September. September, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. still probably like a. Uh, it's it's a while. That, that's a while, but uh. But uh, I'll keep an eye on it. And um, do you happen to know if you have any more U.S. dates coming up? Yeah, we just might have quite a few dates coming up like this year. We haven't okay. released those yet, but like there's yeah, so plans for that. So mm -hmm. much more is coming up for U.S. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, I'll keep yeah, an eye on that. Yeah, and that show in Atlanta, it's a festival show. So, of course, it's not yeah. exactly the same thing as going to a club show. So usually we play like when we play festivals it's like 45 minutes 60 minutes max and when yeah. we play play clubs depending on where we are it's like 75 90 minutes even so oh okay yeah, yeah. oh nice mm -hmm. cool but yeah there should definitely be something close to you like for sure it's oh cool nice yeah it's just yeah, not but... released or announced yet like confirmed but okay great yeah well underway <laughs> yeah well, that'd be cool. Um, do you have a favorite type of venue to play, or does it does it not matter? Like a gig is a gig, like you know, big arena or club or. As long as it's like big enough, like the stage, because we move a lot on stage. Not to think of oh, am I gonna hit you or you with the mm, guitar? Oh, or yeah, yeah. Guitar. <laughs> Basically, that's it. Okay. As yeah. As we feel, when we feel relaxed and not to, not having to think about that, then gig is a gig, at least for me, you know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The size Just enough space, space, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Because fans are the same all over the world. We've played everywhere now, basically. We're in, like usually bands tour, middle bands tour. Uh, you see that people react to the music the same way, no matter where you are, you know, and that goes to show you that okay on an emotional level same type of things trigger us and like pull our heartstrings and stuff like that you know and that makes you understand <clears> hey <throat> like that's a really nice thing mm. that music kind of unites and at least opens our eyes in seeing that no matter what nation or culture or whatever so For sure, it's yeah. really nice we, we first first time we played in the us was last year we've been waiting for that for a long time and also then in south america latin america we played as well for the first time last year uh, it's the same like in europe the response from the people you know in some cities or countries yeah it's a bit louder crowd 
somewhere a bit less loud, but still the smiles and the faces, the look in their eyes and what they tell us after the show and write to us, it's the same. So imagine if we go to a country and everybody would come to a merch stand, you know, like a signing session or something, and everybody would be like, your show sucked. <laughs> what are you guys up? To? <laughs> like that, that has that has yet to happen. But like you know, then we would know that we're in the wrong place. Yeah. Maybe people, maybe they've just been polite so far, and that's the truth. Oh, yeah. Living just in some fantasy yeah. world. Maybe you or well, if, something. Yeah. If it is an honest opinion, of yeah. course. Then we would have to rethink a lot of things. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. But yeah. imagine if they come in spades. You know, yeah, like yeah, all yeah. these people, like <laughs> just hordes of people coming yeah. to complain. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is up with your show? Uh, well, you know, it's funny. Like people, you know, um, respond and, and like they express themselves in very different yeah. ways. Even if they're all like really enthused, you know, some people, you know, they're just like really like getting into it, and other people are kind of like, you know, just like. <laughs> How is it for you when you get feedback? You've been doing this uh, for what, like si sixteen years or mm -hmm. seventeen years? This AVGN, and like, has that evolved somehow? How you take their feedback, and does it affect your decision making? And how do you like take it? The feedback from the fans and the comments, and when they come to you, like. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's usually like I've learned really early on that it's too conflicting. Like you're going to hear so many different things that are all different that you couldn't do just one thing. Like, you know, you know, it, it's like, there's no one thing that would make everyone happy. It's just impossible. Mm. Um, so you kind of just got to do what you think is best uh, for it. Um, like as long as you're, you're kind of like the first judge, like if you, if you're happy with it, and you feel this is good you're doing a good job then that you know that that's it basically um but yeah sometimes it's like hey do, you know do you want to see more shorter videos more often do you want to see less frequent videos and have them be a little bit longer or like or like really make sure every single one we're knocking out of the park so i've tried it all different ways different release patterns and you know um but opinions are always like the same i don't know you just get like all these different stuff and it would really confuse you if you, if you tried to pay attention to all of it and you wouldn't even know yeah. what you're doing anymore yeah well that sounds quite like the same approach uh what i have towards like you know writing songs writing lyrics and arranging stuff and whatnot you know, when you're actually making the episode or a song like you have to close out the outer world mostly and stay true to the to the intuition that you have like to feel what you want to do i feel that this is right i want to do it because it resonates in me and most likely that same feeling will be shared with the others because we as i said earlier we do not like we're not so different on an emotional level in regards to what things trigger us or like what things pull our heartstrings like more or less it's same kind of things so if you feel certain way about what you're doing and i feel certain way about what i'm doing yeah i i can be 90 percent sure that majority of the people or 100 percent sure that majority of the people will feel most likely the same hmm. way and there's gonna be naysayers and you should have done that or that and you know, i still hear sometimes yeah. like some people write to me or tell me like you know what you know you shouldn't have done it like that mm. if you would have done it like that you would have like a 100 million views on that song now you fucked it up you know, it's mixed bad <laughs> and like stuff like that now why don't you do it then you know <laughs> it's like yeah 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 you try it yeah i remember like uh, one person came really to argue kind of like in my channel like i should have held like that note like a tiny bit higher and even in the original like it was a cover song even in the original song the length was the exact same oh really wow know? and i like I, I did it like that just because af right after the music becomes super silent you know and it was a super high note so i was like i don't want to just you know show off and something like and it's like that person was coming with those valid reasons like oh no you, you shouldn't come like that and like i i'm kind of even i shouldn't have of course like gotten into the hassle of explaining but like they would just keep going i'm like 
okay, just, just, just carry on. Like, just keep talking. Like, like, why don't you fucking do it? You know, because yeah, yeah. it's, it's exhausting. There is no point, you know, oh. just as you said, but do you have like a certain circle of people that you do trust, like either with the music or with your videos that you would uh, just like, Hey, I don't know, dad or something like check this out, you know, before you put something out and that you take their feedback, like, as it is like I, I guess we all m m might have but do you have oh those? yeah yeah um pretty often yeah i remember um my friend mike i'll show him a video a lot of times before it comes out and uh he you know because he's kind of like the, like the first fan in a way so um like he just loves the videos and i've I always figure well if he, he's been watching since the start like that and uh he's been in a lot of them uh like most recently we brought him back as bugs bunny for like a little surprise at the end but uh um a lot of times i, I had a conversation with them recently and i was like do you think this video I, i forget which one it was it was probably it was it was one of the videos this year i was asking him like do you think this video is different enough do you think it's like too much of the same thing And he was like, you know what? He's like, I don't mind it when it's the same thing because sometimes like you go to a deli or something to get a sandwich and you have that sandwich, but you come back next week and you order the same exact sandwich. It's not like you don't really care for it to be much different sometimes. Like, like it's, it's good to do things different, yeah. but you don't always have to. It could be more the same and people people like it. So If people like it, why change it? So that's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. And why wh why would you go to the same place if if you don't want the same sandwich? Like just yeah, yeah. Or why would you try to order the same one? Just get another one or go somewhere else. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a balance there. Yeah. Like do something new, but also uh, you know, it's it's okay to do it like, you know, the same kind of thing. Like I'm never gonna get bored of listening to metal, it might be, you know, listen to a different band, but always kind of there's something similar and there's something different enough so um yeah it's like i don't i don't i don't get bored of the same type of thing usually i don't know <laughs> well it's kind of like you know with acdc i know that it is one of your favorite bands of all time oh yeah yeah <laughs> it is my all-time favorite band and oh, you know cool. they, have, they have been doing that stuff for for almost 50 years and it always sounded the same so yeah yeah There was a great interview with Angus. Uh, this was a, around um, in the early 80s. I would say this is when they had about, well, they must have had 11 albums out whenever this was. And uh, to do the math. But anyway, the, the, the important part is uh, the interviewer asked, so, so some people have criticized you for putting out the same exact album 10 times. And he goes, no, I don't know what you're talking about. It's, it was 11. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Mm, great point yeah. by the way did you choose sg because of acdc or because of black sabbath oh probably both i think because i've seen it come up so many times it's just uh you know i love the shape and uh my um the the lead guitar player in my band he he's a lefty and he plays um a right-handed guitar upside down like Jimi right. hendrix Right. So with the Gibson, you know, with that shape, you could easily just switch the, you know, the strap around, your, you know. Yeah, like like oh, yeah. Tony Iommi. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was a he was a lefty. Yeah. I'm a lefty too, but I play like a right-handed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, do you actually play it upside down or is it? Oh, I play like normal right-handed person. Oh, like normal. Okay, yeah. It's just because my dad told me, "Son, <laughs> you're holding the guitar wrong." Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I switched it and started to practice like normal right-handed though i'm still lefty it didn't change my yeah. life so but maybe as, as long as you do it at an early age you yeah. know like i was six or seven so it didn't really matter i didn't know anything i'm okay i'm happy if i could hold a spoon and fork like correctly like without <laughs> letting it drop from my hands <laughs> so, <laughs> so who the hell cares if the guitar is this or that way just keep it in one way and keep mm. practicing and then you'll get and adapted to it but it was good advice because it's so much harder to find the lefty guitars that you want you know like the market is so much faster for yeah, the right-handed yeah, guitars so like it's a way better investment in that kind of way yeah 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 
But I was wondering if you get some things that you can do like better with your right hand, just because you've been practicing the guitar right-handed for so many years. So like, did you develop any skills that, oh, okay, I can do it almost equally with both hands now, or no. it's just, just the guitar and then everything else it's like left. I can drink like with <laughs> this right hand. Wow. <laughs> Look at me go with my hand. left. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Fair enough. That's a skill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and it wasn't rolling rock, so. Yeah, oh, it yeah. was Asahi. Asahi? <laughs> Japanese... Asahi. Oh, Asahi. Okay, yeah. I know that one. Uh, yeah, that is a skill for sure. <laughs> Fair Point proven. Yeah, point proven. <laughs> I'll have to try left hand sometime. Now I'm just curious. What would it be like? I've never tried it. I just never have. I have one last question if you still like can tolerate us. <laughs> uh, I, I've checked your uh, the full feature film. Is there going to be like another full movie? Um, or is that the secret? Uh, well, not the ner well I every time I give an answer it's always going to be something different, but uh I'm I'm in I'm like in the middle of so many projects right now i kind of feel like well it, it could be this that this year i could just do the album all year i could we could do like a little mini tour maybe i'd be happy with that or i could work on the film one or the other could happen but i think it's going to be one at a time so i think this year is going to be the music year right. and then i th i think th there's a there's a couple films that i wrote and they're both di different um but uh one of them is more of uh could be shot more economically where it's very much uh filmed in like one location um few actors uh kind of like a twilight zone episode but uh the other one is a little more elaborate and um that's what i talked about before it involves a, an amusement park i actually thought about the idea of doing it as a short film and then i thought about doing it first as a novel um because uh, a lot of movies you know start as novels and uh like almost every stephen king movie you know it's like i kind of think of it that way where the move the, the book is going to be a lot different um we're same story but uh there's a lot you can express in the written form that you couldn't in the film uh like you know some things are better shown visually some things are better with words yeah. and i so it could be both. Uh, I think a really good example is a uh, 2001, a space odyssey. Like that was a, a book and a movie. Like I got the same time and they're both the same basic thing, but there's, it's a totally different experience with both of them. So, uh, I feel like the, the book, I could write it right here. I, I could, I could just don't even have to go anywhere to do it. Um, and it's just coming right from the mind. You don't have, um, all the moving parts that you have with the film so it's a little bit more direct from the artist right to the the page and then that's that's done and then i'll still make the film someday yeah <laughs> all right it's it's a good plan i'll be looking forward to the film and but i know exactly what you're talking about i also dream about this euro dance italo disco project someday i'm, I'm gonna make it when I have time from Beast in Black. Mm. Now it's all like heavy metal all the way. Yeah. And I just squeeze in those elements into metal. But someday mm. I'm gonna just robots on stage and disco music. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to um, listen to more of the uh, the dance music. It sounds cool. Yeah, it is, it is. It's great. There's great keyboard riffs and melodies, like vocal melodies there, catch choruses and whatnot. But but you need a Japanese singer there. You absolutely do. I think like there could be a different singer for, for every song. Like, Even better. Like mm -hmm. ten different singers for an album. Madness. Mm -hmm. Different colors. Yeah, know, yeah. Pure nice. madness. Yeah, yeah. Oh perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Let's stay in touch. Yeah. It's awesome meeting you guys. Likewise. Likewise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Real pleasure. Big fan of your work. <laughs> cool oh, thank you yeah and i'll keep an eye on those tour dates and i uh, hope uh you know see you in person at one of the shows yeah just let us know just hit us up and it's a deal yeah yeah cool absolutely okay. thanks a lot
All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, so, man. Yeah. Have a great day and happy new year. Yeah. Also. Happy new year. Yeah. Happy new year to you guys too. Yeah. It's been awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Loving the music. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care. Take care. Cheers. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.